Now, the Indian Premier League has grabbed all attention in India with the auction taking place in Dubai today. The auctions, of course, were for the held for the first time outside the country. And the other first was that a woman auctioneer was overseeing the proceedings at the Indian Premier League. Malika Sagar was the auctioneer for the mini auction, but it was no mini auction going by the kind of money and the bidding wars that certain players were inciting. And a lot of the key patterns we predicted was very evident at the auction as it progressed. It started slow. The first batch or the first set did not get too many bids or too many teams jumping right in. But as the trend that we always see often in auction tables over the years, as the batches and the sets went on, the bidding and the interest were just that much more frenetic. Just when you thought the biggest talking point took place in set number two, the all-rounder set or the second session of the auction, came the whammy in the third. Now, Pat Cummins first made all the headlines. He broke the bank, triggering a bidding war that went on for many minutes between Chennai, Bengaluru, Mumbai and Hyderabad. Before Hyderabad bought him on board with 20.5 crores, that's almost um, $2.5 million. What obviously makes this huge buy is that the franchise could also be looking at Pat Cummins as a captain in place of Aidan Markram. That's something that could happen. That's a possibility an option that's open for them. Now, we spoke about Pacers being a big draw at the auction this time, and that was evident as well, with a lot of the Pacers getting enough interest. Let's go with the Indian fast bowlers first. The Pacer who garnered the most was Harshal Patel. Both Punjab and Gujarat went at it, but Punjab Kings won the battle to pocket Harshal Patel for nearly 12 crores, or one and a half million. A big buy that, and alongside Arshdi, that looks like quite a deadly bowling pair. Few other Indian fast bowlers who got some attention, of course, Shardul Thakur, who went back to his home franchise, Chennai Super Kings. Umesh Yadav went to the Gujarat Titans for 5.8 crores or almost $700,000. As far as foreign fast bowlers went or concerned, the most expensive purchase was yet to come in. Alzari Joseph, who left Gujarat Titans surprisingly after such a solid season, went for a whopping 11.5 crores. That's just over a million to Royal Challengers Bengaluru, who were pretty smart through the day and being quite frugal with their purchases. Now, who were very keen on a fast bowler, as we know, going by their conditions, it isn't easy being a fast bowler in Bengaluru. And that's a great addition. But when Mitchell Stark's name was announced, there was quite the activity that followed. This was the longest bid. There was an intense battle, first between Delhi and Mumbai, and then, of course, between Gujarat Titans and Kolkata Knight Riders that went right towards tantalizing and the edge. Both very keen on a strong foreign fast bowlers in their ranks. He finally went for 24.75 crores. That's 2.9 million. Now let's quickly show you who the most expensive buys have been at IPL auctions over the years. Mitchell Stark's purchase by Kolkata was the highest ever. In the years that we have seen IPL auctions over, we remember how Yuvraj Singh's purchase back then was so talked about. So too Sam Curran and Ben Stokes. Ben Stokes, of course, became more uh, of a chatter because it was an unconventionally massive spend by a team like Chennai, who don't usually splurge so much. But speaking of splurging, there were few who do doled out to batters. The biggest buy in the capped batters list was Daryl Mitchell. Chennai staved off the competition from Punjab and Delhi to get Daryl Mitchell, making the core very Kiwi heavy. I say this because alongside Mitchell and Conway, they also got in Rachin Ravindran, the young all-rounder sensation who set the ODI World Cup here in India on fire. His base price was a very modest 50 lakhs and he managed to go for 1.8 crore Indian rupees to Chennai. And again, after Delhi and Punjab showed interest in that as well. Now, Rovman Powell is the other big buy. Rajasthan Royals were happy to get him for under 8 crores. Speaking of the Aussies dominating the auction, like we predicted, Travis Head was up there too, going for 6.8 crores. He was eventually snapped up by Hyderabad after a mini bidding war with Chennai. So what were the highlights of the patterns emerging from the auction? Much like what we've been saying here, Aussies were much sought after. A lot of interest and attention were paid to fast bowlers in particular. Pedigree did not matter as much as recency and form. So a lot of the big names did go unsold on the day. And a lot of the teams went with a core that they rely on. Chennai with Kiwis, Gujarat with Afghani players, Azmatullah Omar Zai coming in for base price to join Rashid Khan. 
and Noor Ahmed. Speaking of base prices, someone like uh, a Hasaranga going for a base price there to Hyderabad, they'd be really, really excited by that buy. Some of the key uncapped players who raked in quite a bit, Shah Rukh Khan, like we said, he would be joining his Tamil Nadu teammates, Vijay Shankar, Sai Kishore and Sai Sudarshan in Gujarat Titans. Sami Rizvi went in for a huge amount to Chennai Super Kings. Shubham Dubey too was snapped up by Rajasthan, a Vidharba player who has starred in Saeed Mushtaq T20 tournament. Quite some exciting talents there that all franchises have begun to recognize to make a part of their setup and groom them for the future. That was one massive trend which emerged from the day. In fact, certain teams that were frugal initially when the big names came up went on to put in the bucks with the lesser known players to be a part of their setup. And then of course, it's up to how all the newbies gel up with the rest of the squad to firm up in time for the 2024 season that is scheduled to begin towards the end of March and go on till the end 